So the other day when I put Ask Me Anything on Instagram, you guys asked me a few questions and one really surprised me. And it was, what would you do if you would start photography from zero right now? And I'm like, all right, this is a very interesting question. I think could be a great video to then give you a few tips and tricks on how I would take my photography process, my photography learning experience if I had to start it right now. So I just wanna introduce you to how I actually got into photography because I think it's really important to understand that it didn't come from like snapping the fingers. So when I was young, I used to be passionate about making videos and I kind of hated photography. So I started making videos quite randomly just because I had a passion for it. I had no intention to make a business out of it. I had no second like thoughts nothing just literally pure passion so what I was doing is that whenever we we're going for a hike that at that time I was living in Hong Kong I was creating a video about that hike just friends talking together uh, with the drone shot trying to make it dramatic try to learn on YouTube from all the guys that you know from Peter Lindgren from Peter McKinnon from Danny Schiffer and all these guys so just try to apply this kind of concept and make videos for fun that's it but then what happened is that I started posting online on Facebook these videos again just for fun and this is really key and people would start asking me just friends hey can you make a video for my gym can you make a video for my restaurant I'm like yeah of course and I was doing it for free then I thought all right let these requests are keep coming then let me charge $50 and then let me charge 100 and 150 and 200 and then slowly started picking up and people would know and kind of picked up as a part-time job then from Hong Kong I moved to London I put it away the video and photo things because I wanted to focus on my university but then when the lockdown happened I started actually tremuting and picking up videos again and try to share all the knowledge that I had on TikTok and then afterwards on Instagram. It kind of exploded and here I am today living a dream where I can share you everything I know and doing what I love as a full-time job. So if I had to start from zero, the first thing that I would do is actually understanding why you want to do it. And this is important because if you're just doing it for fun, if you want to make it for money, if you want to make it for any other reason, then you would take a different direction. So many people, and I've got to tell you, at the beginning, it was just for fun for me, right? So if you understand that you want to do it as a business, you want to kind of transform your passion in something that is a little bit more than a passion, then you can take different steps from a person that would actually just doing it for fun. Then the second step that I would do is that I would start complaining about anything that you have right now, that you don't have a camera, that you don't have a lens, that you have a bad phone, and you just take photos with whatever you have in your hands right now. And I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 of the people that are watching right now they have a smartphone so you're sure you have a smartphone maybe you have also a camera so why don't you start taking that smartphone that camera and start shooting everything so do not complain about what you don't have but try to appreciate what you have because i started the first video that i made were just with an iphone 7 and we we're completely random then i bought a drone and i started integrating uh this video with a drone and so on and so forth but at the beginning it's really important that you use whatever you have without complaining and without thinking about what you don't have in general if i need to give you two tips and two things that you should learn at first these are composition and editing these two things will make a huge difference so no matter what phone or camera you have if you know how to compose a photo you'll be able to take much better photos than someone who has a better phone or a better camera but doesn't know how to compose photos and also the second thing is that editing actually plays a huge part in photography if you don't know how to edit and if you make all the beginners mistake about editing then it's fine at the beginning but afterwards people will recognize that you're like a beginner. Whereas if you learn how to edit properly photos, then this will actually make a huge difference and can make you stand out from the crowd, create a beautiful feed like all the photographers that you know right now. Also, let me add one more thing about the editing thing. I've learned editing completely for free on YouTube and this you can do it as well. So you don't have to invest any money, but if you wanna take a shortcut, if you wanna make it shorter, this process of learning how to edit, instead of watching fractionate YouTube videos, you can try to take courses for example i have four courses right now out and maybe depending when you're watching the video there are going to be more about lightroom about photoshop about mobile photography and about also how to create your reels and engaging short videos so these are all on skillshare and the coolest part is that you can watch them completely for free for 30 days after signing up if you cancel within the 30 days you won't be charged so out there there are alternatives that can help you shortcut this time of learning and they can really cut this learning time that would actually be inevitable if you watch single YouTube videos because YouTube is amazing
amazing, but you don't find a structured learning. And that's the biggest difference between taking a course and actually learning on YouTube. And again, this is your choice. I'm not forcing you to take any courses. I'm just giving you advices on what I would do. And then after you've learned about composition and editing, if you haven't already, then you should definitely uh, understand how the camera works regarding the triangle of exposure. This is ISO, shutter speed, and uh, aperture. So these three elements are everything that you need to know regarding a camera on how to control it in the best way possible. And learning how to use manual, your camera is extremely important. Now, obviously, if you have a phone, I would suggest you try to keep it automatic and then eventually you can try the pro mode. But on phone, I usually always shoot on auto, whereas on camera, I always shoot on manual. So in between, you should invest in a camera, but this is totally up to you. I made a video about the gear that you should buy as a beginner photographer. I'm gonna link it somewhere here and also down in the description. But just to make it short, is that it really depends on your budget, depends on what you do. I think all the cameras are great, depending on the different budgets that you have. But in general, the triangle of exposure, it's something that you can control in all the cameras and then talking about the next tip that i will give you is that you need to try to experiment as much as possible whenever you're going to learn this triangle of iso shutter speed and aperture you'll be able to control and take different style of photo for example a panning shot for example a long exposure for example a portrait using maybe a longer lens for example night photography which is very different than daylight photography so whenever you experiment you learn new things on the go and obviously you're going to watch YouTube videos or courses on that specific topic. So if you want to learn how to take panning shots, you just write it on YouTube, you just write it on Skillshare, and I'm pretty sure some cool things will pop up. And then this is also linked to another element, which is take your camera wherever you go. Usually I have a small pouch with me when I want to go around and I know that there's going to be some kind of photo spot instead of maybe having to take the whole backpack. So it's important that you try as much as possible and you carry around your camera everywhere. Sometimes right now, because phones are so good, I just don't take my camera anymore and I just take photos with my phone and invest in your photography journey as much as possible by practicing a lot what you learn. If you just crunch in and you learn like crazy, learn, 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 but then you never practice, you never apply what you've learned, you're gonna forget everything and you're not gonna be better. And that's probably one of the biggest mistakes that everyone does is actually they learn, 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 never practice and just gonna forget it and done, that's it. Then the next tip that I will give you to move forward is actually trying to double in down on a niche. So let's say you've tried loads of different things and then you find that you like doing portraits, let's say. All right, now let's take a step back from everything else. Just focus on portrait and try to learn as much as you can on that topic only. This is very beneficial because you'll become an expert. And if you become an expert, if you become even an intermediate, you'll be able to do loads of different things by teaching maybe others what you learn in that journey. This is especially important if let's say you want to open a business on your photography thing or maybe build an audience online it is really key that you kind of niche down into something because people are usually interested in one to two to three topics they're not interested in the whole spectrum of photography and whenever you want to focus on one niche then you want to do your research so as I said whenever you want to learn something specific you want to go on YouTube and then write that thing down and then try to learn and then practice but yes you need to do your research you need to try to find inspiration maybe on Pinterest maybe on Facebook groups maybe on Instagram maybe on TikTok wherever you want save whatever content in inspires you and then try to replicate it by giving you your own touch. Then whenever you're building portfolio, then what you want to do is you actually want to post everything online because it's free. It's the biggest marketing tool that we have right now. I've built a full-time career out of social media by just posting whatever I like to do, whatever I enjoy to do. So if you have things and you're creating, just post it. It's not really important how you post it, where you post it, just post it wherever you can. And this is an opportunity that you don't wanna miss because right now on Instagram, TikTok, and also YouTube with shorts and stuff like this is really kind of much easier than it was before to grow. So you don't wanna miss this opportunity right now just post everything, just try to catch as many opportunities as you can and you'll be rewarded, I'm pretty sure about that. And also you don't have to grow like a huge audience in order to actually make a living out of it because what happens and what happened also to me at the very beginning is that I was posting something on Facebook for fun and then people saw it and then people asked me to work for them, to create a video for them based on what they saw. So even if you have 100, 200, 500, 1000 followers, it doesn't matter because the right person can find you by seeing at your photos because if you think about it when I'm looking for 
a wedding photographer, let's say. Maybe I write some keywords on, on Instagram and then some people will pop up. They don't have much followers. Maybe they're 500, 800, 1,000. But then I see their photos and I love their photos, so I decide to approach them. But if you don't post anything online, then you won't be seen. No one will be able to find you. So try to niche down and then post everything on whatever social media so that you maximize your chances to be found. Then the last step that I would give you if you wanna take your photography to the next level is try to make one dollar out of your passion. This means that whatever niche you chose, then it's up to you deciding how you wanna make that first dollar. But if you make the first dollar, you're gonna understand, all right, then if I can make one dollar, then I can make 10, then I can make 100, then I can make 1,000. So that dollar is really important. And if you wanna learn more about how you can create that dollar, I made a video dedicated to side hustle that you can start right now with photography and you'll be able to see it right here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you very much for watching and I'm going to see you in the next one. Ciao.